Now let's talk about something which we require the most, the debugging, the Dalvik debug monitor server or what we call the DDMS. Alright, so let me tell you about this. Android comes shipped in with a debugging tool. Alright, that debugging tool is called the Dalvik debug monitor server. Let me tell you about this. It provides you with various features like what all are the port forwarding that you need to do. For example, you want to forward from one port to another screen captures onto the device that is whatever is being running on the device you want to save this as an image the various threads and the heap information on the device that is if it is a multi-threaded environment what all are the threads running what all is the heap area that gets allocated to the device and all the lock cat let me show you something here can everybody see this window on their respective uh, eclipse environments the DDMS perspective just quickly do around here everybody can see this up Now if I open this up, alright, if I open this up and I see what all are the options that are available to me. See I have a devices panel on the left, can everybody see this panel? So this is showing my emulator here and the processes that come associated with my emulator. Since I have just one emulator up and run, what I'm running here, alright Rahul you are not having DDMS. Let me show you how you can enable this up, go on to window, alright go on to perspective or say go on to show per, show view and here you can find the DDMS view under the other section. Go on to Android right and then you can find out the DDMS view. Since it is already enabled in my device alright it is already enabled in my device so you can do it like this. I'll just do again go on to window go on to show view or you can go on to the open perspective go on to other and then you can click on the DDMS perspective. Show perspective, DDMS perspective. Alright. Alright. Elena can see your PPD. Uh, you, are you able to only see the PPD this time? Or are you seeing the DDMS perspective here onto the window? Because there might be some refreshing issues here with the go to webinar tool. Just confirm me that. Alright. So here I have the various devices. Now if you see I can have the various thre thread information. So if I click on this update thread, it will update the threads for me. Right? Similarly stop updating thread or start the method profiling, I can start the method profiling from here. Now if you go on to the threads, you can see the method profiling going on here and all the thread information that is being shown here. So this is all about threading. All right? If I want to have all the checks enabled for threading, I can use these options. I'll just disable these options now so that we are not in a way so advanced that into development at this point of time that we enable these threading mechanisms all and all. So I have disabled the threading mechanism now. Now let's talk about allocation tracker. All right? So the allocation tracker is the one that tracks the allocation of objects inside the memory of the application or say the device. How many objects are getting allocated, how many objects are getting deallocated when is the tracking has to be started so for example you want to, to start the tracking of all the objects that are getting created while you are using your application you can click on start tracking and this will give you all the objects allocated at present my application is just holding a simple text view so there are no allocations at all if I click on get allocations you can see the allocation tracker retrieves some information to me how many allocations how many reallocations so I can get this allocation using this particular option Network statistics window shows me the kind of network speed that I have. All right, If I am doing some data download from the internet, so it will show me what exactly is the status of the network, whether it is up and running or not. If it is up and running, so I was telling you about the network statistics, how much data has to be downloaded, how much data has got downloaded. All these kind of information can be managed with the help of network statistics here. The file explorer. So anybody who can think about the file explorer? Everybody would be knowing about it I guess. The devices file structure. Everybody understands. It's the devices file structure. What all are the files that are housed inside the device. If I'm having an SD card, if I'm having an SD card mounted, you can see the SD card being shown here. Right? But since I'm working on an emulator here, 
I also have access to the data data folder. Let me tell you about this. I told you that every single application resides on the device with its package name. Everybody remembers that. Now let's see where exactly is that housing the package. You go on to the data folder. Under the data folder you find another data folder. What is the package that we use here for our application creation? Anyone remembers that? Anyone remembers that? I think I have found that. It says com.edereka.firstandroid. Can you see this up? I was telling you about the package name. What is the significance of using the package name? Now you all can see that. It is just that I'm having my application resources housed inside my device on the basis of this package name. Let me also tell you something. You all have access to this particular folder only on the emulator. As a normal user, when this application gets installed onto the device, you do not have access to the data data folder. Alright, so that is what the file explorer contains. Now comes the Logcat part. Alright, so Logcat is the major part that we always work with. Let me tell you about this. All of the application crashes, alright, that an application produces are actually taken care of with the help of the log, log cat. So I see the cat log, I see the application logs and I can make out where my application had, has got crashed. Alright, so everybody remember that if there is a crash in the application, the only point of reference for you in order to find out the reason for the crash is the log cat. Then we have the emulator control here. Alright, let me show you something very different here. I say call. See a call getting coming up on my emulator. Just see a call coming up. Can everybody see this call coming up on my emulator now? So these are all the options that I can use on the basis of the emulators. Alright? I can if I want to answer it, I can answer this call. Right? If I want to just end this call, I can end this call. Similarly, if I try to send a message, I have all the options available with me on this emulator control. I say, once I do that and I click on send, you'll see a text message being sent onto the emulator. Here you go. Alright, so that is how we can use, make use of the emulator controls. Suppose you want to set up the latitude and longitude onto the device or say onto the emulator when you are not working on the actual device. So this is the place wherein you can set it from. Let me know if there is any sort of questions in the emulator control. Or should I assume that this is clear to everyone? Very quickly onto the chat window. I want everybody to be interactive in this session. Now let's talk about a console window. Alright, one has raised his hand here. Usha, have you raised your hand? Do you want to speak up? Alright, I'll unmute Usha here. Yes, Usha, you can speak up now. Alright, I think I think Usha cannot speak up because it's some problem with the mic. Alright, what, what's that? Usha, you can go ahead on to the chat window with your question here. You can go ahead with your question onto the chat window. In DDMS, go ahead Usha, if I could not find any devices in the AVD section, have you got the emulator up, uh, Usha, is my question for you. Have you got this emulator up? Just let me know onto the chat window. That's correct. That is why it is not showing up. Alright. You have to always keep the emulator open and then it will show up onto the window. Let's go back to the Java perspective now. So we have talked about the DDMS perspective. What exactly is the DDMS perspective? So I have shown you everything in terms of DDMS perspective and when to use what kind of a scenario I have already taken care of it. 